Thank you very much, Klaus, for the invitation to this uh, great symposium again. Congratulations and thanks for uh, having uh, us to talk about this topic with uh, femoral osteotomy with the uh, LCP pediatric hip plate. There, as you know, are a huge variety of deformities of the proximal femur, idiopathic deformities, neuromuscular, post-traumatic deformities, and uh, many techniques exist uh, to perform corrections, depending on the level, on the etiology, of course. And we increasingly use the pediatric LCP plate for uh, different corrections. And uh, this plate is available in different modifications, depending on the indication. Uh, the techniques can be used if you really perform a proper preoperative planning, as nicely in publications addressed by the introductors Kai Zibat and Teddy Slongo. This is really crucial. It's the key step for this technique. We perform a surgery in a supine position. If you combine it with a surgical hip dislocation, you can do it in lateral position. Anesthesia is general and we usually also need a block. I will present to you the case of a 37-year-old female patient on the right side. It's a painful dysplasia with rotational malalignment, she has 32 degrees of uh, antitorsion, and it is planned to do a PAO together with a 20 degrees derotation. We started in this case with a derotation, you can go the other way around as well, and we use a 120 degrees plate. And this is now the technique. The patient is in supine position. We perform a 10 centimeter longitudinal incision over the greater trochanter. The subtrochanteric area is exposed through an L-shaped incision and subperiosteal detachment of musculus vastus lateralis is performed. Two Hohmann retractors are placed subperiosteally and the lateral part of the greater trochanter is exposed by sharp dissection. Then the designated osteotomy area is circumferentially exposed to prevent damage to soft tissue. A K-wire is manually placed along the anterior femoral neck to check antiversion and the position is controlled under fluoroscopy. Aiming block and positioner are adjusted according to the planned osteotomy in our patient with an isolated rotational osteotomy and a 120 degree plate, it's exactly 120 degrees. Aiming block and positioner are placed along the lateral femur. The wing of the positioner should be parallel to the femoral shaft and a 2.0 millimeter positioning wire is drilled into the femoral neck parallel to the guiding wire. And again, checked radiographically. The aiming device is readjusted and the first 2.8 millimeter K wire is inserted after fluoroscopic control. This is the first 2.8 millimeter K-wire. We check again radiographically in two planes. After control of appropriate position, the second 2.8 millimeter K-wire is inserted. Then we check the appropriate level of the osteotomy under fluoroscopy. We make sure that bone is exposed subperiosteally at the level of the osteotomy. And we briefly mark the osteotomy level with the oscillating saw. Before the osteotomy is completed, two K-wires are placed parallel above and below the osteotomy level in order to control rotation of fragments. We use 2.0 K-wires. Then the osteotomy is completed and the completeness assured. The five millimeter plate is prepared. Two drill sleeves are fixed to the plate. After the fixation, two drill sleeves are positioned inside with centering sleeves. 
The plate with drill and centering sleeves is positioned over the K-wires. The trochanteric fragment can be fixed with a reduction forceps. Then the first K-wire is removed. A 4.3 millimeter drilling for the screw application is performed and the length measured. Different techniques are available. A first locking screw is firmly fixed to the plate. After fixation, the second K-wire is removed and also replaced by a second locking screw. Pay here attention not to remove the positioning wire before both locking screws have been firmly applied. Now you can replace the second uh, guiding wire and the third locking screw is applied again over a drill sleeve. After fixation and control of all three proximal screws, the distal fragment is adjusted and can be fixed to the plate with a reduction clamp. To perform appropriate derotation, angulated templates can be used. In this case, it's a 20 degree derotation and you see the template. Then the distal fragment is firmly fixed to the plate with a reduction clamp. Appropriate fragment position and closing of the osteotomy is checked in an AP fluoroscopy. Fixation of the femoral shaft to the plate is ideally performed with locking screws. In good bone quality, cortex screws can also be used with the advantage of interfragmentary compression, as you see here. With inferior bone quality, locking screws should be used for all holes. The additional advantage of locking screws, by the way, is that they allow additional medialization of the distal fragment. Final x-ray control shows a perfect result. This is, of course, a very, um, very simple uh, a demonstration just to highlight the principles of the surgery, and this is the six months result of these patients. More complex surgeries can be done also. This is, for example, a uh, patient with an ischiofemoral impingement, as you see nicely here, where we did surgical dis hip dislocation with labral refixation, posterior rim trimming, and a varization neck lengthening osteotomy. Another patient with a hip dysplasia with a perthes like deformity on the right side, also surgical dislocation with neck lengthening and derotating osteotomy together with advancement of the greater trochant. And this finally is a patient with multiple hereditary exostosis, excessive antiversion of the femur, external and internal impingement and dysplasia, where we combined the PAO with this uh, derotation technique and uh, trimming of the uh, exostosis. So you see a very large spectrum of disorders which can be treated, uh, but of course there are pitfalls as well. Complications relate to insufficient surgical technique, as uh, always possible, and uh, problematic patients. This is a smoker, which I would not advise to do again, in addition with a not very appropriate technique, which um, failed due to uh, non-union and he healed when we removed the device and exchanged it to a blade plate. Uh, finally, I have to give my thanks to Kai Zibat and Teddy Slongo because they, over several years, introduced this technique, produced nice publications, although we have not a lot of results at the moment, but uh, they uh, taught me a lot of uh, this technique. Thank you very much for your attention.